Distributed file system. When you access a shared folder on a server using a typical method, you must first know the name of the server that the share is located on. Now in small organizations with only a few shares, this isn't normally much of a problem. But in large companies with hundreds of servers, remembering both the server name and the share name can be a real challenge. Now the distributed file system, or DFS, alleviates this problem of managing shares dispersed over your enterprise by bringing them all into one easily managed SharePoint. You can think of this as one share that contains all of your other shares, or perhaps a single list of all your shares. With DFS, all you need to remember is the name of the DFS server and the DFS root share name. So let's consider a typical, if grossly underestimated example here, where we have four servers, east, west, north and south. We currently have three shares on each server. In reality, we'd probably have a lot more servers and a lot more shares than this, but we're just making a point here for our purposes, so this is okay. So we've got four servers and we have 12 shares that we need to remember. So it would be nice to be able to merge all of these into one single point of access. So what we could do using DFS is to set up a DFS route and we could call it corp, and then we could have all of our shares accessible from this one share point. So the first thing we'll need to do is go and create a DFS route. So we'll go and click on Start, Administrative Tools, and then we'll launch Distributed File System MMC. So the first thing we'll do to create our route is we'll right click on Distributed File System and then we'll select New Route. And this just starts up the New Route Wizard, so we'll click Next. Okay, we've got two choices. We can create a domain route or a standalone route. So what's the difference? Well, a domain route can benefit from automatic replication. So let's say we've got 50 file servers all dotted around the globe, and each of our file servers has a share called Apps that stores all of our applications such as Microsoft Office, our antivirus, and WinZip, and so on. Now we could use DFS to maintain a single share called Apps and have the contents replicated to the other app shares automatically. And this is fantastic because if we update an application, we no longer have to manually update the other 49 shares. Windows 2003, thanks to DFS, will take care of that for us. The other benefit of domain routes is that they have fault tolerance, and that's because the DFS root information can be stored in Active Directory. So if this server happens to go belly up, the other domain controllers in our environment will kick in and take up the slack so our users are not affected. Now it's important that you don't confuse my definition of fault tolerance of the DFS root with fault tolerance of the DFS shares. The links to the shares are stored in Active Directory. The data contained in the shares isn't. So the links are fault tolerant, the data is not. Well, at least not as far as DFS is concerned anyway. But with link fault tolerance does come the advantage of one link can point to several replicas of a share. So in other words, we've got our 50 file servers hosting the app's share. If my local file server happens to go down, then DFS will simply point me to another server that also hosts a replica of the share. Now in contrast to domain routes, a standalone route doesn't publish links in Active Directory. It doesn't provide fault tolerant links either, and it doesn't provide replication. But it does enable you to publish a bunch of shares under a single route. So what we'll do is we'll opt to create a domain route, and then we'll click Next, and then we'll be asked in which domain do we want to create this DFS route. Well we've only got one domain here, so it's a pretty obvious choice for us, so I'll leave the default here of testdomain.com, and then we'll click Next. Now we need to tell the wizard on which server do we want to create this DFS route. So we'll click Browse. And you can see here we've got a couple of servers and a workstation. I'm going to choose Server 01, which is this server here, which is our domain controller. And then I'll click on OK. And now we can see our server name has been entered here. So we'll click Next. And now we need to fill in a name for our route. So I'm just going to call this one Corp. And we can see that providing a name automatically fills in our UNC path. And it's going to create a share called Corp. Now we can finally we can add some comments if we like, so I'm just going to enter in DFS root so I know what it is and I'll choose next. Okay, now we're told that our share doesn't exist, so here we have the opportunity of creating it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on browse, and then I'll just browse to my C drive, and I'll just make a new folder and I'll call this one corp, and then I'll click on OK. And now that our shared folder has been defined, we'll click on next. Okay, and we get our standard summary, so we'll click on finish, and now our DFS root's been created. Alright, well now we need to add some shares to our root, and we'll do this by creating links from our DFS root to the shares wherever they're located. So we'll right click on our DFS root, and we'll select New Link. 
Now the first thing we need to do is provide a name for our link. So I'm going to call this one apps. Now we need to enter in the UNC path to the share. Now our apps share happens to be located on this same server. So what I'll do is I'll enter in server01 slash apps. Now if you do happen to enter in an incorrect path here, when we click on OK, you will get an error when DFS attempts to validate the share. So that's a nice little safety feature there. Now here we can also provide a description, and I'll just call this one app share. Now finally at the bottom here we can see that clients will cache this DFS link for 30 minutes, but we can of course change this if we wish, but I'm happy with what we've got, so I'll click on OK, and then our link will be created. Okay, now we'll go and do the same thing for a few more shares. So again, I'm going to right click, I'll select new link. This time, I'm going to enter in data. I have a data share on this server, so I'll enter in the path, which will be server01 slash data. And of course, we can simply enter in some comments. And I'll leave the rest of the defaults and we'll click on OK. And now I'll go and add one more, which happens to be in our server02, so I'll right click, select new link again. This one, I'm going to call docs. And our path to our target happens to be on server 02 this time, slash docs. And I'm just going to call this one documents. And again, we'll click on OK. OK, now let's go and see our distributed file system in action. So we can simply go and open up my computer. And in our address bar, we'll just enter in the path to the DFS root, which will be server 01 slash corp, and hit enter. And inside, we can see we have three shares all accessible from the one share point. Now you see it doesn't matter where our network shares are physically, we can now access them from the one single distribution point. And this can certainly make writing logon scripts and mapping drives and things like that so much easier. Okay, back in our distributed file system, what we'll do now is we'll right click on our DFS root and we'll select properties. Now here we can change our comments we made, if any, and we can also change the amount of time that clients will cache this referral, which defaults to 10 minutes, by the way, unlike the 30 minutes for the links to our individual shares. Now our Publish tab is where we can publish this DFS route in Active Directory. So we'll check Publish this route in Active Directory, and then we can provide a description, an owner, and then any keywords we would like to use to assist people in finding this DFS route. So since this holds three shares, apps, data, and docs, I'll click on edit, and then I'll add in apps, and hit add, data, and hit add again, and then docs as well, and hit add one more time, and then I'll click on OK. And now we can see our keywords appear here in the field provided. Now we'll be able to search through Active Directory for these keywords to assist us in locating the correct share. Now this might not be terribly useful for our three shares, but certainly will be useful depending on your choice of keywords when you have hundreds of shares. So now we just simply click on OK, and our DFS route will be published in Active Directory. Alright, now let's go and take a look at how we can create a replica of a shared folder. So in my app share, I've gone and placed a copy of the Windows 2003 Admin Pack MSI file. Now, as our other shares don't contain anything at the moment, we'll create a replica of our app share over here to our doc share on our other server. So what we'll do is we'll right click on our app share and we'll select new target. Now here we'll need to enter in the path to our share, which is going to be server02 slash docs. And down here you can see that the default is to add this target to the replication set, which is what we want to do. So we're going to leave this and we're going to click on OK. Then we'll just get a message that tells us that we'll need to configure replication before this data can actually be replicated. So what we'll do is we'll configure it now by clicking Yes. And this will start up the replication wizard. So we'll click Next. And the first thing we'll need to do is select our initial master the contents of which will be replicated to our specified targets. Now this might sound a little drastic, this definition of an initial master, but it's only a temporary thing, so you can just relax. Now, we also have a staging folder, which will be created by default. And this folder just stores temporary files that the file replication service creates. Now you can change this if you wish by clicking on the staging button, and then browsing to another location where you'd like to have this stored. Okay, so I'll just leave these defaults here, and I'll choose next. Now we can define what sort of replication topology we want to choose. Now we can choose from ring, hub and spoke, a full mesh, 
or a custom one as well. Now I'll just leave the default of ring and I'll choose finish. Okay, we're done. Now if we go and right click on our app share again and we'll choose property, we've got a new tab, replication. So if we click on the replication tab, over here we can customize our replication topology if we wish and we can be more specific about what we want to replicate or rather not replicate to our target folder. So for example, rather than replicating everything from our app share across to our doc share, we could choose to exclude certain items from being replicated. So for example, let's say we didn't want Word documents to be replicated across, we could simply click on edit, and then we could define an asterisk.doc for a Word document, choose add, and then OK. And now Word documents will be excluded from being replicated to our doc share. Now we can also filter out our subfolders as well, which is also a nice addition. And this works in exactly the same way as the file filter we looked at a moment ago. Now finally, we can also specify the replication schedule for all connections. So if we click on schedule, you can see that currently it's set to 24 hours a day, seven days a week that replication can occur. But we can simply change this if we don't want replication to occur, say between these hours here, between 11 a.m. and 3 p.m., we can simply check that to say replication can't occur during these times. Then just click on OK. But we'll cancel that, we'll leave up the replication settings to the defaults, and then we'll click on OK. Now some of the other options we have, again, if we right click on our app share, we can define a new target, and we've already looked at that. We can check the status of our DFS link, and if we click that over here, you should see that our status should return as online if everything's healthy, and over here you'll see this reference with a green tick. Again, our next option here is to delete one of the links. We can show replication information, and if we choose that, that'll create an additional column here where we can see that file replication is enabled for these two shares. And we can also, well, obviously hide our replication information if we've elected to show it over here, and we can choose to stop replication. Now at any stage, if we do want to open up any of these shares, regardless of whether they exist on this particular server or not, we can simply come over here to the right hand side and double click on one of the shares. And here we can see under our server one slash app share, we do have the admin pack.msi file installed in there. So if I just close that down and we'll go into our doc share, and hopefully by this time, we will have seen that, uh, in fact, well, there we go, our admin pack.msi has been replicated across to our server o2 slash doc share. Okay, a couple of the other options we have here, if we right click on our DFS root, we can create a new link, we can create a new root target, we could also again check the status of our DFS root, we can also filter out links, and here we can simply change the number of links that are displayed in our console. Now by default, the maximum number of links is 100, so if you do have literally hundreds or thousands of these particular uh, links coming into your DFS root, you can simply change it to make viewing a lot easier. Now again, we'll just go back and we'll right click. We can also delete our route. We can delete any of our displayed links. And of course, we've got the properties which we've seen already. Now on our toolbar, we can also create a new target. We can check the status of our link. And that's what we did before when we actually checked to see if they are online or not. Of course, we can delete a link. We can also show our replication information and we can choose to stop replication completely. Okay, that's the distributed file system. It looks a relatively simple concept that's enormously powerful and will really ease the burden of managing your enterprise-wide shares. In a smaller organization, DFS probably has very limited advantages, but in an enterprise, you just simply cannot overlook the power that the distributed file system will give you in managing your environment.